there YouTube, this is Vargas XX78 with another Super Vargas Bros audio cast. Uh, once again, uh, having to record this thing by myself. Uh, my brother had some other stuff to do, so he's unable to record uh, another episode with me. But uh, just like last week's podcast, uh, I just wanted to, you know, uh, talk with you guys about some stuff that I found out through the week. Uh, some stuff I read online and, and so on. Um, well, personal wise, no, nothing really big has changed. Uh, our baby's still growing. Uh, we still have like a month and a week before uh, her due date. So, um, so yeah, everything everything's going uh, pretty well with her. We still have um, to go to her doctor appointment next week, just so the doctor can uh, you know tell us how the baby's doing and. You know, if everything's going as planned, so, so yeah, the the the, the baby's on her way, and uh, everything again, thankfully, seems to be going okay. So that's the the big news that that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, other than that, like I said, I'm just some random things I read online. Uh, the first one that I wanted to talk about that I read is that the World Video Game Hall of Fame, which is a museum. Uh, uh, based in Strong Rochester, New York, uh, announced that they're going to do a uh, video game Hall of Fame, uh, which is honestly something that's really, really cool to me because, you know, um, a lot of people have always said that video games are are for kids, and now now video games are are a multi-dollar business. You know, everyone in one way or another is a gamer, either. Uh, if they play consoles like you know anything published by Nintendo or Xbox or Sony, or on their smartphones, you know they play things like Candy Crush or or The Simpsons Tapped Out or um, Plants vs Zombies. So in one way or another, people uh, you know play video games, and uh, there's different sorts of gamers. Of course, there's uh, there's the more hardcore people that uh, I include myself in that, that, that you know, uh, play video games and collect physical copies. And then there's this, the casual people that, again, play uh, these really short uh, free-to-play games. So, um, and video games have gone through such a long history, you know, with with the Atari, the, collect, the ColecoVision, the Intellivision, and then the video game crash, and then the rebirth of video games with Nintendo and now and then of course the the console wars between Sega and Nintendo and and Atari was still there to now the uh, the big wars between Nintendo Xbox and Sony and uh, so it, it is cool to see that you know a museum is legitimately gonna put a Hall of Fame uh, wing in their in their museum so uh, the games that they announce are gonna be um, put in their inaugural, uh, you know, thing is uh, Doom uh, for PC, Pac-Man uh, for the arcades, Pong, also from the arcades, uh, Super Mario Brothers, uh, Tetris, and World of Warcraft. Uh, World of Warcraft being the, the newest and most modern game, even though it's been out, out for a couple of years, but it's the most modern one in, in, on this list. Um, I have a, I have a, a personal uh, c connection with Super Mario Bros. because, uh, again, t Nintendo pretty much brought video games back from the brink, but uh, Super Mario Bros. is the game that got me hooked into video games. Um, I might have mentioned this before in another video, but uh, on Christmas, where when Santa Claus, uh, you know, left the Nintendo in in our home. Uh, one of my fondest memories with the Nintendo is that, you know, as, as soon as we got it, uh, seeing my dad play through Super Mario Brothers and, and, uh, him, my brother and me playing, um, uh, Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, uh, that's one of my fondest memories with video games. It was thanks to Super Mario Brothers, so, so it was really cool, uh, to see that, you know, uh, listed in, in a museum. Uh, Tetris, of course, uh, was a big, big game in, in in the Game Boy. You know, anyone that had a Game Boy had a Tetris, and and, and I really, really love playing Tetris. Um, 
which is a reason why I love puzzle games so much. Uh, from Tetris to Luminous to Pokemon Puzzle League to uh, Pokemon Shuffle. Uh, I, I just really, really love puzzle games, and that's because of Tetris. And believe it or not, uh, those puzzle games do help me when organizing stuff around the house or stuff in my collection. You know, it, it's it's stuck with me in the sense that I can find a place for anything if if you know if I organize it, and all of that was thanks to Tetris. Uh, Pac-Man is also a big relevant character. Uh, you know, it was Pac-Man and Mrs. Pac-Man, and it, it it's just a, a fun, innovative game. Pong, honestly, I don't have that much a connection to Pong. Uh, I don't remember playing Pong at all. Again, my, my introduction to video games was with, was with Super Mario Brothers. So Pong, historically, is I understand why it's there. But again, I don't have any personal connection to that. Uh, Doom, I played Doom on the Super and Doom on the N64. I'm actually uh, actively looking for a copy of either Doom on the SNES or Doom on the N64. But um, for PC games, a big, big you know entry... Uh, a real game changer on PC. Also, uh, World of Warcraft. I never got into World of Warcraft. Even after it got free to play, it just se seemed like such a massive undertaking. And I already have very limited time between my hobbies, which is, you know, are comic books, movies, and video games. Um, I never really wanted to get into World of Warcraft because I I I've heard horror stories, like I guess everyone else has, that... You know, people got really, really addicted to World of Warcraft and got divorces and lost homes and lost their families over it. Uh, the Big Bang Theory even did uh, sort of a spoof when Penny got addicted to an uh, MMORG. So all, all of these games do have a reason to be here. So uh, it, again, it's, it's great to see uh, a museum and giving props to video games. Because it's always been that discussion whether or not video games are art. And I do believe, I honestly do believe that uh, some video games are pieces of art. Others are just really quick cash grabs. Uh, there's a lot of shovelware. But there are some games that are legitimately art. Uh, whether it be story-wise or just with the character designs. Or uh, the way that a video game can move you. Uh... Some video games can, you know, really bring out emotions from, from players if they're willing to dedicate time to them. Some video games can uh, show you the importance of friendship. Uh, some video games can, uh, you know, show you the importance of persevering through hardships. Uh, other video games can move you with the death of a character that you got, you know, accustomed to. So... I really do believe video games are art, and it's really cool to see this. Just like the same way that I believe uh, comic books and uh, movies are art, also video games. So it's really, really cool to to have a museum talk about that. The other bit of news that uh, I read online is uh, that DC, not DC, I'm sorry, um, Marvel and Disney are going to release their uh, Disney Infinity 3.0. Uh, the first Disney Infinity was about Disney characters, uh, and you bought and you bought the little um, statues because uh, there weren't action figures. They're little statues, uh, so you can play the game. Uh, Disney 2.0 introduced Marvel characters. Uh, they had the Avengers, Spider-Man, and the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, Disney 3.0 is going to have some returning Mar well, some new Marvel characters. Uh, some new classic Disney characters, but also they're going to have Star Wars, and uh, it makes sense with the release in December of Episode Seven that Disney, uh, you know, is going to work through making Disney Infinity Star Wars themed. And uh, I've seen some some of the molds for the characters. Uh, right off the bat, I know I'm going to get uh, the Darth Vader one. Um, if they make a Boba Fett one, I'm going to pick that one up, even though I haven't seen anything. Uh, I think I saw that they're going to make a Darth Maul one. That's another one that I, I would definitely pick up. Uh, from the Marvel side, I saw that they're going to make an Ultron and an Ant-Man. So I, I might pick up Ultron. He, he looks kind of cool. 
And from the Disney classics, I, I don't I haven't seen anything. But uh, the the interesting thing about this is that Disney uh, is going to get other companies to help them out with the design of the of you know the the levels. Uh, I I don't really have any information on hand about what companies are going to help them out, but I do know that a specific company is going to help out with the platforming aspect of the games, and then another company is going to work with them on the shooting games, and yet another company is going to work with them on the ship levels. So it, it's kind of cool that Disney is, is actually, you know, they're actually trying to make a quality game. They're, they're trying to fix the issues that the other Disney Infinity had. Um, but also, I, I, I fear that... I, I'm, I'm kind of scared that uh, since it has so many different elements, it might feel kind of disconnected. But uh, the figures themselves, at least what little I've seen, look cool. Like I said, I'm definitely going to pick up uh, Darth Maul, Darth Vader, and uh, Ultron. So, so yeah, that, that's 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 something really cool that I, that I read online. Uh, the other thing is that Marvel has released a couple of images for their all new, all different Marvel universe. Uh, the Marvel universe and the Ultimate Universe pretty much ended in Secret Wars number one, uh, and a new thing took its place: uh, a world called Battle Battle World. Uh, Marvel has stated that after Battle World and after Secret Wars, there's going to be a new status quo. And they have released a couple of images uh, showcasing uh, the all new, all different Marvel Universe. In both of the images, Iron Man is front and center. Um, it's a different looking Iron Man. I don't know if, the, if it's going to be Tony Stark. But uh, it, it still has the red and yellow, but it has a different design to it. And they've released two pictures um, for the all new, all different Marvel Universe. Uh, one of the images has uh, a couple of people I don't recognize, but uh, it has Rocket Raccoon, and it looks like he's giving the finger to everyone. It has Hyperion. It has the Thing, but in the Guardians of the Galaxy uniform. Uh, it also has Medusa. It has Daredevil sporting a black look. Um, it has... A Younger Doctor Strange carrying an axe. Uh, who's also in it? Uh, it has uh, the image also has Citizen V from the Thunderbolts. Uh, the two ones I'm most curious about in this new Marvel universe is that they have a picture of an old Wolverine. Now I don't know if this old Wolverine is the old man Logan a version of Wolverine, or if it's the Wolverine from Days of Future Past. Um, honestly, because of the gray, the short gray hair, I, I think it's going to be uh, Old Man Logan, but he has a jacket like Wolverine from Days of Future Past, so uh, he might be an amalgam of both of them. Um, it's good to see Wolverine back, but uh, this is not the 616 universe Wolverine. Uh, this is one of those two alternate reality Wolverines, and while Age of um, Old Man Logan or Days of Future Past Logan are cool, they're not the Wolverine that, you know, uh, I'm a fan of, but it's still pretty cool to see Wolverine. Now, the other character in this image, uh, the one that I'm actually ex also excited about, is that they have a female Wolverine. Uh, they have a female Wolverine in the Wolverine uh, blue and yellow costume. Uh, and I'm thinking, and a lot of people are also thinking that uh, this is X-23. Uh, that X-23 is going to take up the mantle of Wolverine. Now, Marvel seemed to have set up that Sabretooth was going to be their new Wolverine, but if they're going to give the mantle to anyone, honestly, I'm glad it's X-23. Um, the difference, and the main indicator that this is true is that, uh, like I said, it's a female that has the uh, blue and yellow costume, but she has long black hair and two claws, and that's very distinctive of X-23. So, really, really interested in this turn of events that Wolverine, in a way, is coming back with Old Man Logan, but the legacy of Wolverine is being carried out by X-23, so that's that's something that's pretty cool. Um, the other image that they released is that they have uh, three web-slingers running around. 
Uh, they have Miles Morales. They have, I'm assuming it's going to be Peter Parker. And they also have Spider-Gwen. So they're not going to erase Peter Parker from uh, the Marvel Universe, which is something I was genuinely worried about. It, is, it does seem that they're going to integrate uh, Peter Parker, Miles Morales, and Spider-Gwen into one single universe. And that actually opens up a whole bunch of possibilities because if, if Spider-Gwen is going to be in the same universe as Miles Morales and Peter Parker, that could lead up some, to some very, very big things. Um, the other characters that are showcased here, uh, it appears it's uh, one of them is Agent Coulson. Uh, the other one is the new Spider-Woman. Uh, the Falcon apparently is still going to be Captain America. They have Old Man Steve Rogers. They have Black Panther, even though his ears look kind of ridiculous. Uh, female Thor is still going to be a thing. She's still in this, even though that's uh, it was revealed recently that um, Female Thor is uh, Thor's girlfriend. Um, I forgot her name. Um, she was in the Thor movies, but uh, she's the one that took the mantle of Thor. She was dying from uh, breast cancer. So every time she uses uh, the power of Thor, it seems to end up, end up killing her a little bit more. So I don't know how long they'll be able to keep. Um, I think her name was Jane Foster. I want to say her name's Jane Foster. So she's the, the female Thor. They also have a redesign for the Vision, uh, Captain Marvel, and uh, Ant-Man, and an Indian-looking guy. So so they, they are introducing some interesting aspects to uh, to the Marvel Universe. Uh, I'm still not looking forward to much of the Marvel Universe. Um, but again, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the po the prospect of having uh, a Wolverine back and the legacy of Wolverine being carried out by X-23 is interesting to me now. So so yeah, that's that's something that, that I got looking forward to in, in the new Marvel Universe. Um... So yeah, that that's that's cool. Uh, my faith in comic books is slightly uh, restored. Uh, the other big book I'm also looking forward to reading is um, the Spider-Man miniseries for Secret Wars. Uh, it's going to be re called Renew Your Vows, and um, uh, it, it it takes place as if the deal with Mephisto never happened. Uh, there. Uh, Peter Parker is still married to Mary Jane, and uh, they have a daughter, and Peter Parker is trying to make ends meet. Um, so yeah, that's that's the one I'm looking forward to. That's that's the one I, I want to buy. I already reserved it on my pull list. I just have to actually go to the comic book store and pick up my comic books so I can um, read the second and third issue of Secret Wars. Uh, the seventh and eighth issue of uh, Convergence, and uh, the issues of Star Wars and so on. So, so yeah, for the oh, also uh, Sonic. Uh, I don't remember mentioning this in um, in the last audio cast, but uh, Sonic and Mega Man are going to have another big crossover. Uh, I think it was two years ago they did a crossover called uh, Worlds Collide. Where the Sonic universe uh, encountered the Mega Man universe. In this one, uh, it, the same thing is going to happen, but it's going to involve every single universe in uh, the Sega multiverse, uh, uh, uniting with every single universe in the Capcom universe. So basically, you, you're, not only are you going to have Sonic and Mega Man and their respective worlds, but you're going to have uh, the world of Mega Man X. You're going to have the world of Night Stalkers. You're going to have the world of uh, Street Fighter. You're going to have the world of uh, Night Center Dreams. Uh, so all these different things are going to happen in this in, in this comic book. So uh, it seems to be like it's going to be a 12-issue miniseries, uh, just like the other one. So um, really, really lo looking forward to that. Um, Want to see how, how that works out. And the, the first two issues already came out. So uh, I actually have to go and to my comic book store and pick those up. Um, the other thing is that uh, Splatoon, which I haven't bought, and I don't think I'm going to be able to buy in a while, but uh, Splatoon seems to be a, 
a great success for Nintendo. Um, I read online that in Japan the game is sold out. You can't get a copy of the game. Uh, same thing for the uh, Amiibo 3 pack that released. Uh, because uh, each Amiibo gave you like 20 missions. So if you bought the Amiibo 3 pack of Splatoon you would get 60 missions. And you can only get the Squid Amiibo in that 3 pack. So I know that's sold out too. Um, the other wave of Amiibos has also sold out. Um, I was look, browsing through Target and the only Amiibo that uh, I saw there was Pac-Man, which is the one I wanted uh, anyway. So uh, my brother-in-law has a special discount card for Target, so he was able to order me a Pac-Man. So um, I just have to wait for it to come in the mail and then uh, go pick it up. But uh, it seems that Charizard, the one, oddly enough, the one that I thought Nintendo would stock the most, uh, is sold out. <laughs> there's there's no Charizards anywhere. Couldn't find anything online. So I'm hoping that when I do go to the, the comic book run, um, I'll be able to find a Charizard. Because I, I'm super happy that uh, Pac-Man is on its way. But Charizard is my number one favorite Pokemon, as is the case for a lot of people I know. Their favorite one is, is Charizard, so um, I'm hoping I'll be able to, you know, pick up uh, a Charizard there. Um, other than that, I don't think I have that many news. Uh, E3 is around the corner. Uh, I don't think it's already started because I haven't seen any news on, on E3. Um, there has been some pre-announcement. They have announced that uh, uh, Fallout 4 is happening. A lot of people have been wondering when the new Fallout is going to be released. And uh, it, it, it's just been announced. There's going to be a new Fallout 4. Uh, I've seen the trailer. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Um, it, it's going to be next gen. So you, you're going to have to either play it on a top model PC or... On the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, so, so yeah, um, I'm not honestly looking into buying one of those consoles, uh, especially not the Xbox, and the PlayStation 4 just honestly doesn't have anything that interests me, uh, other than Final Fantasy 15, maybe Kingdom Hearts 3, and uh, that's pretty much it. Because the other thing Sony announced is that they're going to release. Um, an Uncharted remastering, and honestly, that that just seems sad to. It honestly does seem sad to me that uh, they they keep revisiting their franchises. You know, they 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 made the PlayStation Four not backward compatible with the PlayStation Three, and I guess this is the reason why, so that they can resell you HD masterings of their games that you can get super cheap on the PlayStation 3. Uh, so that seems like a really, really stupid thing for Sony to do. Um, the other thing I just remembered, the other thinking of Sony and how they're making really, really dumb decisions is that uh, they've basically put the last nail on the coffin uh, as far as the PlayStation Vita. Uh, one of the executives mentioned that on a shareholder meeting, that the PlayStation Vita has now become a legacy console. Um, I honestly didn't know what that was at first, but um, I've read some articles online, and they've said that it means that the, that Sony is not going to support the console anymore. Uh, if developers want to keep releasing games, they'll 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 authorize it, but Sony themselves are not going to you know work or promote or do anything more for the PlayStation Vita. So. Um, it, it, you know, Nintendo has such a dominant uh, foothold on the portable market that it is kind of hard to for any company. It's been hard for any company to actually uh, give any sort of headway on Nintendo. Uh, the play, the first PlayStation, uh, the PSP, uh, was honestly pretty cool. It was a really awesome machine, and everything they accomplished uh, on that thing, technic, uh, in as far as um, as far as you know, the technical aspects, it was pretty impressive. I mean, being able to play, uh, I re remember being blown away uh, by playing Ridge Racer at how awesome it looked on the on the PlayStation Portable. Uh, but after that, they released some really awesome games like Luminous, 
which is my favorite game on the PlayStation Portable. But then they started releasing all these ports that, you know, just showed that they didn't, didn't have much creative creativity. Um, other publishers did release some really awesome games on the on the PlayStation Portable, and it was a wonder to see that thing running and and how cool the graphics looked. Uh, but I, I I was never interested in buying a PlayStation Vita. Um, again, I'm I'm super happy with the DS and now the 3DS. I'm actually looking forward to buying a new 3DS XL. Uh, maybe after the baby's born, I'll save whatever I can and somewhere down the line buy the thing. Because I really want to play Xenoblade Chronicles X. Um, but yeah, the PlayStation Vita is dead. And honestly, it, personally, I, I know there are probably some good games on the thing. And techni technically, in the technical aspects, the PlayStation Vita uh, is technically more superior than the 3DS. I don't know how superior it is to the um, to the new 3DS, uh, since that thing can run Wii games. But, uh, uh yeah, it's it's kind of sad because oh, what really gets people innovating is competition. You know, if you want to innovate something, uh, nothing does it better than competition. And um, if Nintendo doesn't have any competition, I'm, I'm actually a little afraid that they might slack off because they they have nothing to they have no one to fear. And I think that's what was good about the PlayStation Portable is that when that thing came out, it was, it was such a cool thing and such a cool console that I do think that pushed Nintendo to brought, to try to be more innovative and release some really really cool ideas like with the DS. Um, but yeah, now that, now that they don't have any competition, I'm afraid Nintendo might stagnate a little bit. Uh, I'm always going to support Nintendo, and I know they have really, really creative people working, but nothing pushes anyone to do their best in competition. So uh, in that aspect, I'm, I'm kind of sad to see the PlayStation Vita go, even though, honestly, it was never really that that supportive. Um, let's see what else. Um... No, I don't have anything else news-wise. Um, Movie-wise, I haven't gone seen uh, ha well, haven't gone seen any movie. Um, saw the trailer for. I'm uh, looking forward still to Jurassic Park. Um, the newest additions to my cup collection. I have a, a cup collection going. Uh, the movie theater where I go, uh, Sinopolis, has these. Um, Cups and uh, I want to get the Jurassic Park ones, but I got Dominion. Uh, I think I might have mentioned this in in the last audio cast, but I got a uh, Pirate Minion and uh, I got I have some of that Inside Out. So yeah, what else? Um, I haven't been following wrestling that much, unfortunately. Uh, I always do this thing where. When I when I get into wrestling, it's usually during WrestleMania time, uh, about the time the Royal Rumble comes out. That's when uh, wrestling gets good for me. Um, but that that time between the the Rumble and and WrestleMania. But lately, um, I don't know. I I keep up with wrestling, but it doesn't seem that interesting. Uh, Brock Lesnar still isn't back, and uh, Seth Rollins is the champion, but. He's, he's the kind of champion that I don't like. The one that's always running from matches and seeing, oh, I don't want to fight you because I don't feel good. But or, or or defends his title but is assisted by like a bajillion people. And and I don't think that benefits the fans because it, no one, at least I personally don't want to see a champion like that. Um, and it doesn't benefit the wrestler. I don't think Seth Rollins has a chance to shine and show how good of a wrestler he is when he's stuck in this Weasley uh, cowardly character um, so I, I don't like the direction that the WWE is doing uh, John Cena is still the US champion and he had a really cool fight with the champion of NXT uh, so that's the only thing worth watching and Daniel Bryan is, is gone they're gonna have a. I think they already had, but I don't know how it ended the um, the elimination chamber for the Intercontinental Championship. But Daniel Bryan's gone, so yeah, he's he's not there. He's still in 
in a capacity because he's going to be the tough enough, one of the tough enough champ, uh, judges, I'm sorry. But he's gone, so pfft, that kind of sucks. But yeah, haven't haven't kept up with wrestling. I haven't seen UFC in a while, actually. Um, I don't know if it already happened or if it's going to happen, but I do know that Cain Velasquez is going to come back. And he's going to fight the, uh, the champion that was put in his place to re regain his championship. Uh, I want to see that one. I want to see that one because uh, uh, wrestling-wise, I think Cain Velasquez is pretty cool, and he's a dominant force. His matches with his match with Brock Lesnar was pretty awesome. Uh, his fights with Dos Santos was was pretty cool. And uh, but it, you know, it, it, it's a bummer that he got injured. He came back. He got injured again. Now he's back. Uh, he's kind of been plagued by by injury and. And, but I want to see his comeback. I want to see his comeback. I want to see him win again because it's always cool to see a, a Mexican stand out in in sports. So, so yeah. I, I also thinking about getting back into basketball. Um, the NBA Finals are around the corner. <coughs> I think they actually already started yesterday, but I missed those. Because um, I think like most people, I, I got into... I, I already watched a couple of games in the NBA... Mostly when uh, Magic Johnson and the LA Lakers would fight Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics. Uh, those were really uh, cool cool matches, but uh, I really got into the NBA when Michael Jordan uh, was winning games with the Chicago Bulls. That, that's when I got hooked on the NBA, and uh, to this day, even though they, they, they haven't recaptured that glory... Uh, the Chicago Bulls are, are, are my favorite NBA team. I, lo I like the, the, the uniform design. I like the logo. I like the colors. The Chicago Bulls are, are still my team. But I've kind of been disconnected on the NBA. I've played NBA games, though. But the NBA itself, I haven't actually sat down and watched a game in, in a couple of years. At least four years. Because I've... Uh, yeah, at least four years. I haven't actually sat down and watched a basketball game, so so I want to I want to get into that. I've been playing NBA 2K13, I think it's 13, might be 2K12, but um, I, I as I'm playing the game, I remember how awesome uh, basketball was. So I am thinking of getting back into the NBA. If I can't watch the the finals, I'll start with the regular season season and no. Keep up with the with the NBA. Um, so yeah, I think I've run out of uh, topics to talk about. Um, I'm hoping I'm still hoping my brother will uh, will actually be able to join me next week. Like I said, I'm trying really really hard to be consistent uh, with these audio casts and release them each Friday. Uh, we'll record them on Friday and release them as soon as they upload. Um, I wanted a, real, a more controlled format. That's why I started the topics with my brother. But uh, next time I'll promise to have everything written down and not, you know, push it on the fly like I'm doing uh, right now and like I kind of did last week. Uh, be more consistent and, you know, more controlled on what I talk about so I don't ramble on and on about uh, all the topics that I, I can think of. Cause, um, yeah, because last time I, I, I thought of a couple of topics that I could I wanted to talk about and I forgot about them. And this week I can't remember. <laughs> uh, the news that I gave are the ones that stood out the most for me. But I'll, I'll try to, you know, be more concise and not ramble on and on and, you know, go on so many different tangents. So, really short audio cast. Um, hope you guys enjoy these if, you know, you listen to them. Uh, you know, I, I would appreciate some feedback if... You know, if you think these audio casts are worth the time and effort, uh, you know, let me know. Uh, if not, well, then I'll think of something else to, to provide content on the YouTube channel. But um, for now, uh, thanks so much for listening, guys. And until I see you all again, this is Vargas XX78 thanking you and signing out. <laughs>